Beyond Beyond, uh, the conference call, by the way, is going on 40 minutes in. We'll bring you the details as we have them. Beyond Beyond Meat, there are plenty of other names reporting this week. In fact, more than 30 percent of the S&P 500 is out with results, along with seven Dow giants. So how should you play the big week ahead? Chartmaster is here to literally give us the long and the short of it. Carter, take it away. Well, it is a big week, just like last week, and the stakes are high. You get it right, you get paid, and if you get it wrong, you take measures, limp home busted, as they say. So anyway, let's put a line down the middle. I've got you two buys and two sells, and each is not so much by the company, but by the pattern type. GE is a bearish to bullish reversal, a real dud that's starting to bottom. Square is a strong stock that looks going to break out. P&G is vulnerable extended, too steep. I think you fade it, and Exxon is a weak stock that looks like it's going to get weaker. Let's look at the patterns. So, starting with uh, Square, a lot of tension here, but I think you can draw the lines many different ways. One, like this, you can see there are well-defined tops at a common level, and the presumption is that we're going to break out from these well-defined tops. That's a nice setup. You can see how symmetrical, put in the green arrow, the betting is this way. Another way to draw the lines for Square would be as follows, but the same presumption. After a great run-up and a big period of tension, resolution up and out. All right. GE, by contradiction, a real dud, right? But I think this is what is called a bearish to bullish reversal. How to draw the lines? One way is just put in a moving average. Another way is to do a wedge. Here's the wedge. It's the same thing, but it's happening at a bottom as opposed to square at a top. My, my betting is that we're going to break out. Here comes the moving average to put it in context. This line, you can use any one you want, but a longer term moving average typically is important. 200, 150. In this case, it's starting to bottom. It has all the look and feel of a bearish. It was very bearish, two bullish reversal. All right, two that I would fade. So this is a case of too good, too hot. Um, has come a long way, a couple ways to draw the lines. One with a trend line. But again, the principle is, yes, we've been perfectly off the trend line, but every time we've gotten this far above, we've checked back, we've checked back. I'm betting that we would check back. Another way to do it is instead of using an actual trend line, use an automated trend line, back to the 100 entity moving average. How far can you get? without ultimately getting reacquainted with your average price. The betting here is that it will f not be good enough. And then ExxonMobil, you know, the truth is what? The truth is this. It's just a big old waste of time. But let's take this chart and talk about relative performance. T the thinking that here we have the low in the market and that the stock has bounced, yes, albeit barely, but it's making new two and three and four year lows, not so good. Uh, this is the, another one that I would fade. Carter, come on over. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt, go. right? Yeah. Jonah will bring the chair over. Thank you, Jonah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to start with Procter & Gamble because Staples had a new high today. So is this as much a, a, a sector call as it is a Not Procter so & Gamble call? I mean, okay. Just, just before, you know, technique, you mentioned something about a good technique is to wait for earnings and then to press, like if short should press it, or wait for the strength and then go after it. It's a little higher risk to do this because you can really get murdered, right, if you get it wrong, the direction. But in terms of Procter, we know that it's had three quarterly beats in a row. Two of them, the stock advanced aggressively. Last quarter, it beat again, but it didn't move higher. And I think you have that risk again here. So you showed it coming to the trend line multiple times. How far below is that trend line? So what do you think the sort well, of Well, so if you use the trend line itself, that? it's 3 to 5%. If you use the moving average, it's more like 7 or 8. Mm -hmm. But I think the principle is this, that anything in an uptrend, or most often, are characterized by counter-trend sell-offs, just as downtrends, even on your way to zero. Have stocks have counter trend rallies. So counter trend moves against the primary trend is the part of the way markets work. Procter and Gamble to me, and I know Carter's still here, I'm not, so I won't ask him directly, but I'll just make a comment. He's still here, you can ask him directly. But I'm just going to I, I haven't yeah, kind of I, I, get, I get concerned. I'm so scared now <laughs> ever since we brought him back when he was. My concern with Procter and Gamble is simple. It trades 25 times next year's earnings card. It's had 6% EPS growth. What are people looking at in Procter and Gamble that they think the stock is going to Well, we do trajectory? have maybe a, a sort of a roadmap. Think what Coke did. Now, Coke is equally, quote, expensive with equally uninspiring growth, and yet Coke popped dramatically on its earnings. So the bull case would just be that, you know, somehow this is a, a, a place that you can be okay, even if it's stretched. My thinking is that it won't do what Coke did, and that, in fact, it's more risk to the downside. Yeah. Carter, how, how does Square uh, appear relative to some of the other high multiple tech stocks in the space that really actually didn't have a very good quarter? Uh, look at PayPal, look at some of the other Right, peers. and Square's was the greatest winner of all. Yep. Right? Blew away all this, other, and now it's been the laggard. And the thinking here, at least uh, what I see, is that this recent relative performance is the setup for the catch-up. 
Um, the others are just, well, all FinTech is up and to the right, right, mm -hmm. and very extended. Mm -hmm. I think this is an opportunity. Carter, thank you. Thanks, guys. You Goodbye, bet. Carter. So you uh, <laughs> Goodbye, the guests. Is that clear? Formal. I hope that was no, clear. I get worried. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. BK, which of the Carter's trades do you like? Square. Mm -hmm. Easily square. And I, you can talk about the valuation, but what's interesting about Square is data is the new oil. What does Square have? Data. GE. So, GE, the, my number one pick in the Power Lunch stock draft. It, it, I think the bar has been so lowered for 2Q in terms of free cash flow. The company said minus one to two billion. I, you know, to me, the comp is actually not that difficult. I think GE's bad news is very, very baked in.